my faith started from one to thousand and i stood on my faith and i said nobody is going to tell me that i'm not going to have our children i am not going to accept that told my client that if i don't have my children there, there's not going to be a rapture i have to i have to i know i can't just get up from home and be coming to church and um, praising god thanking god and then we we'll just return back home like that no it's not going to be possible we have to have our children i said that because um god said there's no there's not going to be a barren in my house and we are always in god's house sometimes i go i go with my husband whenever he's going out to minister in different church and then you say some a woman will just walk to him and said can you pray for me to have my baby and sometimes they'll call bernard and said I just had my baby twins and then I have cried. If I tell you I haven't cried, I'm I'll be a big liar. I have cried. Welcome to another episode of the Dennis Bento show. This is a show where we uh, share our life stories and our testimonies to glorify God and to edify his people. Today, I have Mr. and Mrs. Addo on the podcast. Welcome, Mr. and Mrs. Addo. Thank you. Hmm. So, <laughs> we in Columbus, everybody in Columbus, every Ghanaian in Columbus know you guys, right? <laughs> Unless you are not in Columbus, then they, probably they don't know you. So, for those who are not in Columbus, those who are not Ghanaians, those who don't know you, would you guys want to say something uh, a little bit about yourself so that we can get to know you guys? You are both first. <laughs> um, I'm a hairstylist, a beautician, and then um, uh, we've been married for um, 16 years. Uh, this year will be 16 years. And I'm a half gun and half crowbar. Wow. Yeah. And you sing as well. You forgot our part. <laughs> I, 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 I sing only, only my in my church. church. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And your first name? Hannah. Hannah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Welcome. All right. So, so my name is Bernard. And then Niado is actually my artist name. Uh, those who know me, I'm a gospel artist, a musician as well. Uh, fellowship with Jesus Power, but... I go around a lot, so yeah, many probably. people have seen the face, many people know Niado, or you call Niado. So I'm a gospel artist, uh, 100% guy, and I'll say maybe 80% guy, and then a little tree or fanti or how do you want to call it, but yeah, yeah. But, yeah the domain is a guy, so yeah, that's, that's all I'll start from, actually originally from Accra, some place where uh, Los Angeles in Accra, if you don't know. <laughs> Los Angeles probably, in Accra. Yeah, Which uh, part is that? I know some people ask there is Oxford Street in Accra. I don't know if you heard about Oxford Street. No. Or they call it Osu. And then the Los Angeles is LA. Not that bad. So, <laughs> 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 wow, that's amazing like you said you, you're a very busy man i've been trying to get you guys on a podcast and today minister yeah there is somewhere <laughs> new york <laughs> there is in maryland <laughs> it's good luck to right here but, uh, to be able to make it today yeah thank and thank you guys for coming and so without much ado i would like us to go right into your testimony and who is starting? It's usually the ladies first, right? Yeah, there was. <laughs> yeah, like I said from the beginning, um, I've known him for, I think this year will be 19 years. Wow. Yes, 19 years. And we've been married for, we've been friends for 19 years. And then we've been married for um, 16 years. How did you guys meet? Um, good question. Um, when I came from Ghana, my dad took me out um, to um, a baby shower. So that's where I met him. 
I think a, a, um, a week, I came from Ghana like a week before my dad took me to um, a baby shower. And then I met him also, I think a week he came from Houston, Texas. And so that's um, when we met. And then I was sitting quietly at, the, at one corner because it was cold. And I told my dad that I don't want to step out. And then he, my dad forced me and then took me out. And the way this guy was dancing, I said, who is this? So I passed by him. I was going to the restroom and I passed by him and I said, um, no, I was going to say it in English. Then I heard, overheard him um, having a conversation with somebody in Ga. Then I said, ah, are you Ga? And he said, yes. And I said, I like the way you dance. That's all. That was what happened. Mr. Niado, what is your version? <laughs> I, I think she said it all right. I think I've come from Houston, Texas, I think around October. And I think she came October 9th, around then. And I think October 13th. There was a party going on, and then I came to visit the family by then. Oh, so you were originally in Texas? In Texas. Oh, okay. So I came to visit. My auntie was here and some of my family members. So I just came in. All of a sudden, I got a job opportunity, so I told them I'm not coming back. So it wasn't planned for. And then right on that weekend, they said, there's a party, let's go. So we went there. I think it's the same day. And then she just passed by, and we spoke again. That's how we met. So it was just coincidence. She came from Ghana, I think three, four days, and then at the party, I just saw her. So we just started talking from that. But it's quite a, a journey. You know, it didn't end there because, you know, fresh boy, you've come and you've seen a new girl from town. You know, we just talk. I, I quite remember I asked her for a number. She's like, oh, no, you can't call me my dad. Won't let you. I said, oh, let me just call. She said, no, 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 my dad, I don't have a phone number. You can call. I said, give me your house number. I'll call. It was a challenge. So... I think she gave a call she didn't pick for a while, I think. But it was a little tough because I quite remember we met again, again going on. I think the uncles came for another party and all that. And it, it was in winter. They came actually to one of my auntie's place. I think it was around December. And then she came with her sister. And then uh, we we're just dancing again. And then I tried to talk to her, but... All didn't work because she's like, oh no, you know, she doesn't really like it. I'm like, okay. But I just want us to talk and know that we're friends, but I'm trying to move from friendship and that's what she's, <laughs> she was like, oh no, 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 no. You'd be surprised there was even one day we met at the party. I had to go and drop it at home. I went and dropped it all right. And then you know, young guys after dropping it, I said, oh, can I even get a hug? It's like, okay, I don't know, okay. We just gave a hug and then. I gave her a kiss. I left the following day. I called her. I'm like, I thought things would work. I said, I don't think because you gave me a kiss, I still like, I don't want you. Oh, you. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Okay, this is tough. So I'm like, what will I do again? And then we met at my auntie's party, came with her family, friends, and then sisters. And then the sister, one of her sisters saw me. She's like, oh, you are nice. I had a necklace. I was okay. I wanted to talk to your big sister, but she doesn't want me. So maybe I'll come for you since you are the younger. And all of a sudden, we started talking. And that day, she has a wrist watch, and the watch fell down in the snow. So I picked the watch. We seen them off. I didn't tell anybody. I just kept the watch. And the battery, I think, was dead. I still kept it. I didn't. But I called the uncle. And I'm like, oh, where does your, you know, knees work? I have to give something to her. So he showed me the place. Because I still wanted to talk to her. So I took the watch there with the dead battery just to go and give it to her <laughs> to still <laughs> initiate talking so she's right it was to a party that we met and it's been a journey it's been a journey as time goes so deep in <laughs> <laughs> so why were you giving him a tough time from the beginning um because um he came out and told me that he is a um a gospel artist i did not want to go out with a gospel artist um no, I take it back. No, just a gospel artist. I don't want to go out with somebody that he or she is a public figure. I don't. I just want to hide in my corner. I don't want to go out with somebody who the whole world or half of the world will know him. Yeah, so that's 
the main reason why I told him that I don't want to go out with him. So how how did things transpire from friendship to relationship to marriage? Okay, so um, I started her school. I think around the, that year or the following year, I think I started in her school. And then I, was, I wasn't driving. My dad is the one who would take me to school and then pick me up from school uh, back home. So um, there was this heavy rain because I normally go to school in the evening. And then there was this heavy rain and I called my dad and my dad said, he won't be able to pick me up. So if I can ask one of uh, my instructors or some of my friends to drop me home. So I called some few friends and then they said, eh, you know, the rain, it's, it's, it's bad out there. So call this, call that, this person, call some of your friends. And I say, you know what? So I, I think I, I call like three people and they all ignore me. Then I said, let me call uh, Bernard and see if he can come and pick me up. If you're watching this video and you have not subscribed to this channel, then I don't know what you're waiting for. Please, please subscribe to this channel because we have mind-blowing testimonies. We've shot some amazing testimonies that we can't wait to uh, just release it. We are releasing once a week. Uh, hopefully, eventually, we'll be able to release two or three times in a week. So please click on the subscribe button and click on the notification bell to get notified each and every time I release a new video. And also, if you're looking for a team, a media company to shoot your commercials, to shoot your weddings, to shoot your parties, or to give you some headshots for your flyers and everything, reach out to my team, that is DH Multimedia, on Instagram, you can DM us or you can give us a call and we would take a very good care of you. Let's get into the testimony. I called him with attitude, <laughs> with this kind of attitude, because <laughs> I don't, I never wanted to call him. Yes, yeah, so I called him and I said, um, where are you? Not even good evening, not even hi, not even hello. And I said, um, I asked him, where, where are you? Then he said, I'm at work. And I said, okay, bye-bye. Then he said, um, um, what do I need? Like, what am I, what am I looking for? And I said, um, I don't know if you can come over to my school and pick me up because my dad won't be able to pick me up. Then he said, okay. Then he came and picked me up. Not he left work. He was at work. Oh, so by the time he, re he went back to work, he was fired. Hey. Yes. So that, was, that day was when I decided that I'll marry him. Leave work. Yes. I know. It was it was very tough. Like prior to that, like she said, we weren't even in good terms by then. I think we're then having, you know, those little arguments and stuff. So when I saw the call, I'm like, okay. When she cut it off, I'm asking myself, okay, what can I do? Then I realized it was raining very heavy too. And then She'll probably stay there. I don't know how long the rain is going to be. So I didn't tell him. I just told my supervisor I was taking my normal 30 minutes break and leave because I just thought I could just make it a quick trip and just come and just get her. And then maybe my colleagues can just stand in for me and say, hey, I'm back. <laughs> probably it's in the bathroom or something. Because I spoke to one of my guys. So I just left. Lo and behold, it was a very heavy rain. So we couldn't speak. Because even it was even hardly to see on the road. But we had to manage and then I dropped the home and I had to manage to get back to work. And then I got a notice, okay, well this and this. The supervisor have been here four times looking for you. So <laughs> it wasn't quiet. I said, okay, anyway, well, if this is the price I have to pay just for <laughs> Wow. <laughs> trying to get hold of a lady. So wow. I took it as one of the things I didn't, you know, mama about it. I'm like, maybe yeah, it is what it is, maybe. It's another door is about to open or something. So, wow! I just took it like that. So, how long did it take for you to get another job? It took me quite. A while. I think during that time too, around those time two thousand and five six, there were a lot of jobs opportunities. So, one of my friend who noticed I've stopped the job spoke to me about some 
construction job. We just have to go do cleaning, screening and stuff. And I realized that was much comfortable because we only have to clock in on phone. Uh-oh. You don't even have to go there. And then I can go to the job site. And a job that will take me eight hours, I can do four hours and come home. And then the next four hours, we'll clock back. So I'm like, okay, maybe this one was better. The pay was also better. So <laughs> I had people that I saw there and then they trained me and stuff. So it was okay. So I'm like, okay, maybe that's the main reason why maybe I have to leave this one. And so it was, it was, it was about it. It was a blessing in disguise. So the the him uh, like leaving his job for you m- made it for you yes that was a big sacrifice yes yeah, so that was when i told myself that mm-mm, i have to give him a chance wow yeah. wow yeah. guys if you're watching <laughs> you're <a job. laughs> don't quit your job it's not work for you you also don't work so how's the transition from there to getting married? I think it keeps it keeps going. After that, we still came back. We started talking. But she was still a little, you know, after that she made that decision. It was quiet on, on, on her because she never said it to me. So, oh, so she, she made a decision, okay, I'm going to do this because this guy did this. But I was still in the mood of, because she hasn't said anything yet. So I quite remember we were still giving, I give her rides. We will go, sometimes she would need a phone card to call friends back home. I will buy the card. Sometimes she would be like, oh, I'm trying to support a friend of mine with the phone. I'll be like, okay, how much do you have? Let me add up so that we can give it to the person and all that. So it went, I quite remember I invited even her to church to come and even sing because I was then with Power of Faith. And then she came with her sister and all that. But she had it in mind that this and this decision. So I think there was one time, it was even tough, even on this, my other job too. I quite remember we were exchanging, we exchanged pictures. So I took some pictures. She gave me some pictures of hers. And then on this, my other job, she took pictures and all of a sudden when she made that decision on that day, I quite remember I was at work again. And then all of a sudden she called me, we were talking on the phone. She's like, uh, I needed to give me all my pictures and stuff. I'm tired. I'm going back home to Ghana. <laughs> I'm like, this lady, what did, you, what did I do again? So I'm like, okay, that's why I was at work too, but I was almost ending my shift. So I'm like, okay. Well, when I end the shift, you meet me at my place and then I'll take give you all your pictures and stuff. Because I have some pictures of her. So she's like, I want everything that is mine that I give to you. Pictures, whatever I want, because I'm, I'm done. Why? I want to go back home. And that's what she, I don't know if it was a prank, but, but she had it in her mind. Was it a prank? Because <laughs> yeah, she came to my place after work and then she came. She was like, okay, this and that. Man, you brought to that where I was living in, with my family and friends. I'm the type when you come, I'm more of more of work. And even the room, I only have a bed on the floor. And she sometimes will come, she'll look at my cousin's room. Ah, there is nice, but why is yours on the floor? So she will buy me shoes. She used to like those things. One day she came, she was like, it's not that this guy is not even having money. I'm just looking at his wallet. There is money in. Why is he not trying to, you know, adjust himself, get some stuff? He's always with this tie and dye material from Ghana. <laughs> that was what was, that was what put me off. So he's like, <laughs> this guy is always putting on time and die, you know, but he has money too. Why is it not? So that day she came, so I'm like, okay, so let me give you your pictures and stuff. Maybe that's the end. Maybe it's not, it's not gonna work. So after I gave her the pictures and everything, she was gone and she didn't turn back. It's like I don't wanna go. <laughs> well, I was saying that I don't wanna go. And so that's what I thought maybe was a plus. I'm like, ah, from yeah, it's a plan. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, she should probably try to test my, you know, but that she has already decided on what she want to do. So that was the beginning of the main journey. And we're like, okay, now we are into it now. So let's start talking. So that night we have to sit down and talk. Go back. She's like, oh, not that she didn't want to go, but she wanted to let me know that she have accepted and these and that and that. So that's when we started the main journey, started talking, you know, started to know each other more going out here and there, here and there. And then we realized, okay, this thing is going far, 204, 205. We're still talking 206. Then we started to think about what 
we want the journey to be like what we want to do now. So quite remember my uncle was here by then, spoke to my dad and everything. And then my uncle was actually a friend to my dad. My dad. Yeah, that's very, very best friend. So he has to come in by then and then so that he can go and talk to the dad and see what next step we could take. And then lo and behold, 207, yeah, fast forward. Uh, I think 206 is when we did the engagement back home around March. So we were not there. It was the same the year. The same year. Yeah. So, yeah, we did the engagement, I think, six in months March, prior to in March. And then, and then we got married in August. So 2007, we were not there. Parents were back home because my mom and stuff, but my dad and stuff were here. So we have to send our picture. So uh. we use the picture those times to do the engagement whilst we are not there. And then the engagement and everything happened. And then 207, we had opportunity around August 26 to get married here. And that was the journey of the miracle. That was when the journey begins. As you know, when you, you married, you know, a Ghanaian community, the moment after wedding, there's an expectation. <laughs> Everybody's mind is like, oh, my warrior, you're witness. <laughs> so everybody's expecting for a baby. So that was the tough journey that we have to fight now. Because after one year, nothing is coming. But like, oh, okay, it's just the normal thing. Keep pushing two years, keep pushing, and keep going. They keep going, they keep going. But the good thing is that uh, none of our family, side by side, uh, None of them gave us any pressure. They understood us. They were just praying with us. They never questioned that about why is it taking long? Why is it that? So I think she will continue the rest of me. <laughs> <laughs> so it took us um, 15 years to have, for God to bless us to have our daughter. Yes. So we had um, um, told her last year, um, on the tenth of February, yeah, fifteen years. Fifteen years, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it took us fifteen years. I was there during the um, uh, naming. The I thought it was ten. No, <laughs> it was fifteen. Hey. Fifteen years. It it was not easy. <laughs> it was not easy. How, how are you feeling? Yeah, how a guy will easy. feel and how a woman will feel is different. And I have cried. If I tell you I haven't cried, I'm li I'll be a big liar. I have cried. But I thank God for Bernard. I thank God for my husband. I really thank God and I I really appreciate him because Bernard has been there for me and he's still there for me. The the words of encouragement, like the way Bernard would even talk to you, if you start crying, you even stop and you start laughing. Bernard has really been there. Hey there, sorry for the interruption, but time and time again, I keep getting phone calls, I keep getting DMs about the type of cameras to use, the type of lights to use, what are the, the best lenses to use. So I've made a list in the description. If you're just starting out, you're just using your phone to shoot and you have only $100. I've made the list for you, the type of light to use, the, light, the type of lights and stand you need to shoot your contents. But for the intermediate level, if you have less than $1,000 to spend, I have some a list of equipment for you. And if you wanna spend more than $1,000 to get the best equipment out there, then those are also down for you. And I'll leave my personal equipment, that the type of camera I use, I'm a Canon shooter. I only use Canon, that's what I started with. So the, the equipment that I use personally, I've listed them down there for you. Also for my fellow content creators, I have good news for you. Don't tell anyone, it's a secret between you and I. 
So I just stumbled on this platform, which makes posting content very easily. Imagine creating content and you click a button and it goes to all the platforms. You don't have to go to Instagram, then move to TikTok, then move to Facebook, then move to YouTube, then move to LinkedIn to post your, your content. You post it once on one platform and it distributes it for you. That's amazing, right? This platform is called Metrical. I just found out and I was blown away by how fast and effective it is. And it is for free. Yes, it is for free unless you are a social media manager for a lot of accounts like two three four five accounts then you're making money right so they gotta charge you for your service but if you're like me and you only have one platform that you're managing then it, it is for free i've left that link in this description just click on it sign up and you're good to go if you have enough content you can schedule all the posts for like months and months ahead and it will post automatically for you that's mind-blowing right yeah okay let's get into the testimony so um i think um um six seven years ago we came to church and then uh pastor bismarck called i think he called the two of us in front of the congregation and he said god has given him in the name that we're going to name our daughter so the name toda came from pastor bismarck our, our spiritual father so we started praying um concerning the name about the name then every sunday when pastor sees me he'll be like ah, hannah i don't get it you have to be pregnant so you, you had to. a name even before you were pregnant yeah, yes that was like that was at like nine years into the marriage yes and you have a name and you, uh, no nine, after uh we, after the wedding okay it was, it was yeah about eight years after the wedding so like yes yes so, pastor bismarck don't get it, it every Sixth sunday day. he'll be like hannah I, I, God, God was the one who gave me the name. So you have to get pregnant. Then one day I, I became frustrated and I said, I asked him, um, God told Abraham that I am going to bless you with a lot of many children, but the date and the year, I don't think God gave Abraham the date and the year. So I told pastor that, you know what? Um, just, let's leave everything in God's hands and let's pray and let's thank God more. Because I know I will have my children, but the date, the year, and the date and the time, it's what I don't know. And because my husband was there for me, and uh, most, of, most of the time he keeps on encouraging me. So my faith in God became very, very strong. So one day um, I was doing, I was working on a client and then I boldly came out. I don't know what pushed me to say what I said to my client, but I told my client that if I don't have my children, there's not going to be a rapture. I have to, I have to, I know I can't just get up from home and be coming to church and praising God, thanking God. And then, we just return back home like that. No, it's not going to be possible. We have to have our children. We have to. So we keep on um, encouraging ourselves. I stop crying. I stop. Anytime I, my, my, my monthly, um, um, I just let it go. I, I stop. We, we stop talking about babies. We stop talking about if you come in, if you come to my salon to get your hair done and you start talking about children, I'll just stop you. Let's. <clears throat> Even if they are not talking about your children. Don't talk to me about kids. Don't try. Some people try to, um, to like to intimidate you. And I don't like that. Let's talk about something different. The reason why I came out with that is I have given everything to God. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Right now, I want to thank him more. So we went to um, um, a, a cousin's birthday party. That was like three years ago. 
And then we were having the conversation and I also came out boldly and I said, no, even God can tell me I won't have children. Yes. Then there was this older lady sitting next to, I think she was sitting uh, in front of me. Then she turned and said, because of what you have said, very soon you have your kids. And I didn't say that out of frustration. Or I said that because um, God said there's no, there's not going to be a barren in my house. And we are always in God's house. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes I, I, um, I, go, I go with my husband whenever he's going out to uh, sing or going out to minister in different church. And then you see some a woman would just walk to him and said, can you pray for me to have my baby? And I said, then I'll, I'll just <laughs> look at him. I said, pray for them. And sometimes they will call Bernard and said, I just had my baby twins. And then, and I thank God that anytime somebody will call me and then she said, she will said, um, I just had my baby or I'm pregnant or I'm dad, I'm dad. I don't have this kind of bitterness in me because I, I, I knew and I know that if it's God can do it for this person, the next person will be me. The next person will be me. And I, I was very strong. This kind of faith that I, it's, it's in me. I, I told Bernard that I don't, I can't just describe this kind of faith. My faith started from one to thousand. And I stood on my faith and I said, nobody is going to tell me that I'm not going to have, we're not going to have our children. I am not going to accept that. I will not. Not just children. Anything that we are looking for in God's house, no, we have to have it. Not just uh, children or not just um, marriage or anything that we are, we are hoping for. Because we are children of God. So anything. And let me tell you one thing. Right now, I thank God that, that it took us 15 years before. Because you can't, right now my faith, chai. <laughs> my faith, <laughs> it's going to be possible. It is going to be possible. Mm-hmm. Right now, the, the, what my faith is right now, eh? <laughs> so, it's just, I just want to encourage somebody out there. Do not give up. Don't. Don't give up. Do not. Even if it's not possible, tell yourself, encourage yourself, and tell yourself boldly. Be bold. And tell yourself it's going to be possible. It is going to be possible. Yes. Mm. And, and, and also we, we, we taught ourselves that we are not going to allow nobody to intimidate us because uh, we don't have kids yet. I'll reply you with quotations. Mm. I will reply you. I won't go home and cry. No. I'll, I'll reply you with quotations. So that was what, mm-hmm. and I thank God uh, from the beginning, he says something that both our parents, my parents, and I thank God for his parents because none of them, none, nobody in the family asks me, when are you going to have children? Wow. Nobody. <clears throat> that's, they were there for me. That's very, yes. very rare. Yes. <clears throat> Because we are Ghanaians. <laughs> Ghanaian family, <clears throat> you'll be there and there. So, someone will bring another wife for you. They were there for me. That's, that's they were there reality. for me. No. And they are still there for me. I thank God for his family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the community we are in. So, like I said earlier on, it, it, it's quite a journey. It has been a, a journey. And my wife actually said it. And it is, ask yourself for those years, we've, we've tried many things. <laughs> Not that, I quite remember there was one Doctors. time they said a womb is closed. Close. We have to go and open the left <laughs> tube. We have to go and open the right tube. We have to do laparoscopy. We have to go and do these. Like, we name it. 
you know, I quite remember even in, in America here yeah, with seeing many doctors, none of them even, when you look at her, she used, she loved gym. So she loved training and all that. So she wasn't that, to a fact that they didn't even see, most of our doctors they didn't even see she had fibroid. It was in Ghana, as we saw she had fibroid. She undergoed surgery for fibroid, took fibroid. I'm talking of 16 ounces of fibroid. Not a small thing. <laughs> and they so, couldn't find it here. No. They couldn't. couldn't see. So it was, it was tough. Like I said, the journey has been a journey. But through it all, but through it all, the strength was, I quite remember like she was saying, it got to a point, because I'm already jumping in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm doing whatever. You know, I'll come in always smiling. I see kids around me. There are many kids that I've put behind my back. I've carried them. <laughs> People even know on Facebook, they are my kids and all that. Anytime I go, children are always like around mm -hmm. me. So that thought of, you know, it will get your thin. Mm -hmm. was keep running. So I quite remember there was one time she, she was crying. And I picked the bucket of water. I said, if you can fill this with your tears, then don't stop crying. Mm -hmm. Because it won't change God. If you can fill it. I quite remember along the journey, you go to a point. As a woman, she looked at it. She just called me one day. She said, you know what? If you find, find someone. If you can find, find someone. Find go yeah. Oh, yes, I'll, support support I'll support you. I'll support you, guys. Let me know. She will me. I'll support you. So I, I said, I'll, 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 I said, I'll go to Pastor Bismarck and I'll tell him that I have given you the, the opportunity to go and do. So I'm like, just go. <laughs> so people were like, ah, so if you were to be in my shoe, what, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's very tough. What are you going to do when you get that message? Yeah. And he said, okay, you can go and find someone because I think I've hold you. Yeah. But he kept drawing and I'm like, oh God, for someone to even come out with that bold step. And I keep asking myself and I keep jumping through it, all these. I quite remember there was a time, not even health like us. I quite remember there was a time I went to one of our doctors here and then I was just going to do a checkup and then he called me and said, your liver is poor. You have to go and do surgery. I'm like, wow. Sometimes I'll be coming to check and all my face will be swelling, my hands, and I'll go home and it's gone. And then I went, they said, my liver. I have to go and run church. I will run to the altar. I was the one who normally altar. Pastor will say, if you don't see oil, I'll come and drink oil. I'll always steal oil by the altar. I'll drink oil. <laughs> then I went back to the same doctor, went back to surgery. They went and ran a test, one a test again. He said, everything is okay. So I looked at all these things. I'm like, I'm jumping in your house. I'm doing these. Like she was saying, I'll go to programs. And people will be like, pray with us. I'll pray. And all of a sudden, some of them will call me, want to name our baby with you. People will call them like, oh God, then why me? But I realized we have to go through that trials. We have to go all these for this testimony for somebody there to listen, somebody there to read. Like she was saying, she fast forward most of the things. You know, women, when they are anxious, beginning. Oh, when an auntie calls and says, oh, there is a place here, let's go. She will run to go. Bro, let me tell you one critical thing. There's a place we went. And when you look at this place we are in. No, they'll tell you uh, it's a church, but it's not. We go there and then you look at it no, and then my spirit teacher, I told her, you know what, the place we are is not a church. The way that we even divest the word and talk about, we're already in our heaven, there is no, the way that we even talk the thing, she was like, oh, this your auntie's doing it to a point that they even ask us to go, as we go back and wear, G -G, uh, I don't know how you call it, you know, going in Ghana, you no, have this brown the, and then khaki uniform. 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 I think the, yes, the yes. school school uniform. We we continue continue to go and buy school uniform again, come and buy school uniform. Hey. Told us to go and get some stuff. Told us to buy a live crab. She has to tie it in my wife's stomach. Hey. Because we are looking for a fruit of the womb. And then not at a point where I'm like, no, my sweet is not there. They will line up such it of water, pure water, and you will line up the way they will smash you with the water. <laughs> they say they are praying for you. All the bags, you have to eat one bag to each person. <laughs> one bag to each person. And I'm like, no, my spirit is not here. Let's leave. So after all these trials, God was teaching us, you know, and like she was saying, it's just to encourage someone in his own time. Look, it may delay, but you can never be denied. And it got to a point, that was the thing. God took us to scripture and was like, bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually. There was a continual praise. So we're like, okay, let's just stop thinking. Now let's keep praising him. Let's keep thanking him. The thing is when you thank God for the things he hasn't even done, it will boost him and say, I haven't done the thing for this person, but he keeps thanking me. So let me just do that. So these are all really 
pushed us. He pushed us and pushed us. And like she was saying about it, the name, the name came. God was like, what are you doing to the name? The name has come. What are you doing to the name? So I just stood there and said, I don't know. And then there was a message, no. Why don't you present the name to the word and I'll provide the name? Hmm. So that is the initiative of most of my program that I'm doing, the Toda All White. Yes, so I have to come back to my spiritual father and then my music pastor and say, oh, this is what I want to do. And I'm like, okay. It took me to scripture revelations when the 24 elders took their crown in the garment, white garment. So I'm like, there was all white party. There was all kente party. Why don't I do all white Toda? So that is when we started the Toda ministry told our worship experience and that we keep going we keep going we keep going i remember there were pastors that really encourages us there were pastors that i met for fred diallo will take me to watch that will pray for four hours and he said we see babies around you but on that cycle will preach you have seen babies and so james how came so we see babies i quite remember reverend so the superintendent now of uh, of assemblies of god Reverend Dr. Stephen Wingham. I remember there was a time I went to their church to do a program. He called me in the office with his pastors who prayed together. And he, he's one people that also really were looking after because he took him like 14 years. So I looked at him when he speaks to me. I'm like, if it has taken you 14 years, then I'll get there. Mm-hmm. I can't remember when the day when I told them my wife is pregnant. I said, Nee, wow, you passed me. Well, yours is 15. <laughs> <laughs> and then we left at the place. And it has been a quiet journey. And uh, so that came to existence. Even for them, even coming alive was another thing. So we have to add miracle to her name because both of them were not supposed to leave. Looking at the situation, baby was not moving for a day and they have babies not moving. No, let's slow it down. <laughs> <laughs> let's not brush over it. Let, okay, so... So, okay, before we get there, were you getting pregnant and having a miscarriage or no pregnancy at all? No. Wow. No. Wow. Mm -mm. And uh, what were friends? Did did you have any friend or people who were, like, advising you to go get a different woman? There there were friends who actually, they were not telling you, but they were like, oh, I know a place. I know this medicine. I know this, this concussion. I know these. One of even took us to a friend who come and they said we should bring quarters, queens. They have to bat with air. Like most of the friends were like, oh, let's do this. And it will happen. Let's do this and it will happen. And I quite remember when she told me I can hold someone. There was one of my friends I discussed. They said, if a girl can tell you this, and we were very careful. Because not all women will tell you that, you know, for her to come up both step, then make sure if you are going to do it, then probably somebody will respect her. Somebody will not come and disrespect your home. So maybe go far away. <laughs> Did you think <laughs> about far. it? So when you talk, I'm like, I thought about it as human, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, you also want to leave a legacy, your name. I'm kind of, okay. The thing is that, you know, that thought, when they told me that, I'm like, it can be through. But all of a sudden to keep running to, because of what I do in the house of God, and there is a question mark. I'm like, okay, I'm leading people. I'm talking to people. I'm advising people and stuff. So if what I, teach them or what I tell them and I don't practice it. What is, what am I doing? And that thought will also come because right after we're talking, then I'll go to a program and then there will be a message. Oh, I see you with babies. Okay. You know, so those things were like tough, but God always has a way of dealing with us because at the moment, I come remember one day I was just there sitting down. I'm like, okay, so it is not a bad thing if it happens. Then the message will be like, okay, so that means you're trying to run ahead of God. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you believe you are the, you're the one saying in his time, it makes things all beautiful. Why don't you wait for his time? Because you might think it is thousand years, but it's a day yeah. in his eyes. Okay. So then they took me back to some people that I noticed. And then one person that was so really shook me was Reverend East Tudanaba. I looked at him, somebody who has given birth to children and he's just preaching and all the kids die. All the two children die. But the man was still seven. So you that you haven't given one and somebody who has given birth and they have grown and they've died and he's still seven. Their wife. So I'm like, oh no way, then I can wait. You know, so though there were challenges up and there, there, but the thing is the word I would tell people as is the patience to wait. 
is the patience to wait. Because if you don't have that patience to wait, you will run ahead the race. And you might not even find it good for what you experience because you run ahead and you don't wait for God to lead you. Okay. So now let's get into when she got pregnant. When did you find out that you were pregnant? So um, we went to Ghana, is it two years ago? Two years ago. And then um, somebody told me about this um, doctor. Uh, and the name is Dr. Bokman. That's, so that's my doctor. And then somebody told me about this doctor. And I said, you know what? Um, I'm tired. I don't want to see you. No, I'm tired. And my husband said we should go and try. So we went and then he said, Oh, you are fertile, you can have kids. And I said, Are you sure? Then he said, Yes. And we started treatment and all that. And then Bernard had to come back to the state. So I was there by myself and then um I started feeling um, sick. And then I called and he said, uh, I have to come to uh, the hospital to, for checkup. So I went and then they, they did um, a blood test and then a urine test. So he called, he invited me to his office and then he said, um, both the urine and then the blood shows that you are two weeks pregnant. <laughs> hey. Chai. <laughs> hey. Two weeks pre- <laughs> two weeks pregnant. <laughs> I started crying like like a baby. Then he said, "Ah, why are you surprised?" And I said, "Yeah." I'm surprised because I have not been pregnant before. Never. So I sat in my car. I drove to um, the hospital at Taifa. So I sat in my car and then I called my husband and I said, the doctor said I'm two weeks pregnant. And he said, he said I, I know. I felt it. I was just, I think I was just praying and I fell into transition. And then I saw a baby. So the woman, she told me I wasn't too much surprised because I realized something I've shifted, you know, and like we said, sometimes we have to descend. Mm-hmm. And so I just, on a normal basis, I was like, okay. But even herself, even I though still couldn't still, believe it. So when I was going home, I stopped by uh, this pharmacy <laughs> and I bought a lot of pregnancy tests. You're testing every day. <laughs> every other day she tested. <laughs> I bought a lot. And every morning I have to test it. And it's all came positive. <laughs> yeah, so um, I stayed back in Ghana for like seven months. So, after um, during the seven month, then I decided to come back to the state. So I came back and then I came to church and Jesus power. Everybody in the church was happy. Everybody, everybody was was happy to see me because we we decided not to tell anybody. So. Pastor came to Ghana and then he saw me with a pregnancy. And he said, How long were you there for? A year. Oh. Yeah. So, no, I mean, after the pregnancy. Oh, when after you, the pregnancy. When you, when you really you find out it was pregnancy, it stayed to like this. Because I think what happened is that it was, it was all like, one thing I would say is it was all in the discernment of spirit. Because, you know, it's been tough looking for the fruit of the womb. And prior to that, like I said, we've done everything people know to do. We've done IUI. We've done all these things here. None of them. We've done all those. 
So it didn't work. So God told me, just like Elizabeth was high, just hide there for a while. Because she's the type who would not like to sit. She like working. Work. If she will come, she will come and work. <laughs> but if she's there, I know there I'll are people sleep. who will sleep and, and sleep. Keep, you know, take care of her. So that's what, so we even hide it from even our family. Everybody. Nobody knows it. Everybody. So after six months, I think the time of Pasata was gone, that is when I told my spiritual even father that this is what has happened. And then he jumped and he said, he remember there was one day at church when we're doing service and she has to pick somebody's oh, baby. That was... Um, grab somebody's baby, run to the altar points. and sat in the altar holding the baby. And that's what my spiritual father said. The woman she does, she did that. She realized, he realized, no, something has shifted. So the moment I told him, that's what he remembered first. <laughs> so we hide it until Pastor Ta went and saw and then she came and everybody was like, so thank God has a way of doing things because if she was, she was here, she would be working. And even that day she came, she didn't want me to know she, with that pregnancy, every seven pregnant stood on her feet for like, the whole eight hours just braiding somebody's hair. Hey. <laughs> so just imagine hey. she would have come early. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah. So in the time, so the following day, she even had to crawl on the steps to go upstairs because she were, the feet were all tired, swollen. But she didn't tell me that was the cause. Because I knew <laughs> she knew I'll probably be, you know. So she didn't even mention it till later she told me. This is workaholic. Uh -huh. So yeah. I knew I that if she was to be here, no, no, no. This won't, even if you tell her to stay home, she will find a way yeah. to go away. So God hired her for a while. And then the moment she came, even like I'm saying, that one, she became at work. So the, very day. the very day she got here. <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> After they went through a lot at the airport, even their flight and everything was delayed. Those at uh, those hours from back home, she still found it to work. I work. You, you are strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was a challenge. That's why she she stayed there for a long yeah. time. And then when yeah. I mean, she came to, we had a little few challenges here. When she came, I think the day she came. So just imagine somebody who came that day, and that day. She came and work. She didn't feel the move of the baby. The baby wasn't moving. Because if she worked herself out, the baby wasn't even moving. Now she runs to the emergency the following day. And then they told her the baby was also sleeping. She, resting. She's resting. She's resting. She's resting. She's resting. <laughs> the baby is dying. Because we already stressed the baby. Yeah. So the baby was dying. And then we just leave it on. And then we go to check up. Day in and day out, we we'll go because everything. we have an appointment. Everything was okay. Baby okay. was moving, but because she has done the fibro surgery before, we knew she was going to go through C session because we know that baby was a bridge by then. So we've talked with the doctors and everything was agreed on. And then we went for a checkup. I think Tuesday. Yes. We went for a checkup. Everything was normal. Baby was moving. Everything was. And then Wednesday, she had the move of the baby just quite a little. And the rest of the day, the baby didn't move. Thursday, the baby didn't move. Quite remember, she came home. I came home. She's like, baby, it's not moving. I said, well, let's dance. I put a song, come and see Big Belly dancing in the hall, just making sure we wake. Because we thought she's sleeping again. Mm -hmm. So we should just use music to wake her up. Dance and dance. Nothing wasn't moving. And then Friday, she called the doctor. And the doctor was like, okay, you should come in. And then she called me. I was at work. She said, honey, oh, when you finish in check, when you finish work, then we'll go and see the doctor. But I went to work early. I went close to like around two, three. So I was just there and the voice was like, no, leave work and go home. So I called her. I'm like, you know what? Get ready. I'm coming. Let's go to the office. So on our arrival, we got there and all of a sudden, all our face changes because we see doctors coming in and out. They keep coming. They keep calling. So oh, baby, the heart and everything, if they, they have dropping. to, it's dropping. We have to get her out, out right. right away. So I'm like, okay, I didn't know what's going on. They just put on stuff for me. It's just you wait to wear things. They took her in, but the good thing is that there was a whole bunch of doctors talking, came around. A home doctor came around and everything. I can't remember doing the session. I was just sitting down praying. With my normal thing, praying tongues. This woman would tell me to just keep quiet. Why am I praying tongues? <laughs> it's it's stop, stop you. <laughs> la, 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 la. It's, it's oh, normal. It's normal. What else can I do? You know, that is what I know doing. But you know, as a woman, trying to hear the cry of a baby. Baby came out. She wasn't crying, but she was breathing on her own. So she kept asking me, where is my baby? Where is my baby? 
But my baby is there. She says she hasn't cried yet. So lo and behold, annoying, there was an helicopter waiting to take the baby to the children's hospital and all that. But one thing the nurse said that day, which really made me know that this is a miracle and all these God have his hand in it, was the nurse look at me and said, I don't know the kind of angel that follows you guys. Because the two of them should have not leave. Both of them should have been. Both your wife and the, and the kid. Wow. Yes. So, so that's, two of that's, them. What, that's what we So that's what we, we added we the miracle. So the grandmother was like, no, we have to add the to miracle to Yeah. And today, if you see her, mm. I quite remember that even doctor told us this baby can turn into blue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this baby can turn into blue. Yeah. Well, you'll be surprised when they took her to the children's hospital. Anytime I go there, they were like, this is our angel in the house. She's always smiling. Every test they run there, she's 100%. Everything they did, cooling, everything. The only thing I go, anytime I go there, I just take my anointing oil, anoint the baby, and just go. How long was she at the... She was almost oh, yes, two, two weeks. weeks. Two weeks. Yes. So they thought there was something wrong with her, so they put it, her on a helicopter and... Yes, they, they took her there because it was yeah. breathing. Uh, she has opened her mouth. They thought things, no, no, they have to take care. They have to go and cool her. They said she has to go under cooling for a while. No, they didn't put her in an incubator. They didn't cover her or anything, but she was just there. They said they have to rhyme some, what do you call them? Tests. So they put all these things, what do you call them? I forgot what name they give to it. Just to make sure the brains and everything was for instance, they did all that. They came back, everything was normal. So they keep all of a sudden, they were like, we are taking her to the recovery room. <laughs> so she went there and then God also brought another miracle over there. Where she was there, one of our church mothers was working there. Mm -hmm. She passed by her, she didn't even know that was a miracle. And then the one of the nurses that works there, I went there, I saw this nurse taking care of the baby. I'm, we had a chat. I don't know if she comes to the church too, so she was taking care of the baby too. Oh, wow. Yeah. So God did a miraculous thing, and then <clears> she had, then lo and behold, we brought her home and... Since then. Since then, come and see miracle. We've never we never even thought about those years. Because even a smile alone makes you forget whatever you do. So she's just a she's just a miracle. Yeah. Wow. 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 <clears throat> <laughs> this is just a miracle indeed. Yeah. And it's just amazing. Uh if you had married someone else. Hey. <laughs> 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 that's, that's a tough one. I think I was doing some interview last yesterday, and then one of the guys was like, Charlie, Charlie, this one, dear me, I can't. <laughs> yeah. And he said, he said, oh, oh, that's no, this no, pastor no. who yeah. came. He said, no, and he, he told my husband that I'm a pastor, but I don't think I would have been able to wait for that long. Yeah. The guy said, oh, no, 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 no. I, said, five I, years, I, can't. I, I have now seen the reason why God brought us together. Yeah. 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 I would say when... The pastor said that and I was looking at him like, eh, me too, that's why I didn't marry you. <laughs> 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 yeah, so... Um, it's quite a journey, but like I said, yeah. and it is yeah. it is all the doing of the yeah. Lord. Yeah. yeah, it takes patience to wait. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, I would tell somebody out there listening, somebody out there watching. You know, yeah. don't throw in the towel mm -hmm. right now. Yes, it is. It is just have the patience to wait. To wait. Uh, yeah. If he have said it, he would do it. He so. would do it. Yeah. yeah. If he said it, he would do it. Yeah. And um, while you're talking, like, it's really important, like to pray for the right person. Yes. Mm -hmm. exactly. Because if you don't pray, if you don't get the right person, you don't know the temptations and the trials that you're going to go through. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you guys have married a wrong person, then mm. it would have it been, would a, have been a, a <laughs> Yeah. Because I know people that would have like, say three or four girls mm. and their husband would be like, Oh, because my wife hasn't given birth to a boy. The boy? They will pass somewhere <laughs> yeah. and have more kids somewhere else. Yeah. But in all this, you even gave him the permission. The permission. Yeah. But he stayed. <laughs> Abram, uh, 
at Rumfield, right? <laughs> even at Rumfield, <laughs> even at Rum, listen to the wife, but you didn't listen to to, uh, to your wife. You're like, nah, let me let me listen to God and yeah. the the kind of mission and the vision and the purpose that God has for me. I can't do that. Yeah. So and, it took me back, honestly. I'm like, okay, right now you want a public figure, a gospel. But she refers to public figure. So it was to be <laughs> not a public figure and it's not into Christ. What would the challenge be? Mm. You know, so this, like you said earlier, is good to pray also so that God will connect you, you to the right the person. Right person. Because yeah. that is the only way. Because if you don't, you don't get the right person, these things, like you're saying, just imagine families, like you say, it, it is very awkward. And you have the perfect family as well who are not giving you problems. No. But that's the thing. No. This Ghanaian family, they were, Ooh, not giving you us, they were not giving us any Not problem. even one day. Anytime my mom would call me, she just prays and said it will be all right. Yeah, wow. They were They've not giving us never. any problem. Just imagine I'm the first born. The my junior brother got married, married in August. Two. He's giving birth to three. Two girls. And a, boy. and a boy. And then our last one got married, giving birth already. She's also having two. So just imagine. Yeah. By now, they'll be telling you. Ah. You. <laughs> now we'll be first, you know. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Like, man. But none of them. None they were always them. praying. My junior brother was my, praying. And, my, um, my brother-in-law hmm. will, be, will call me and he'll be encouraging me like, say, what they kind of never. family? <laughs> yeah. This is. <laughs> yeah. None of them. None. 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 Wow. Wow. None. Wow. Praise none. God. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So what would you, for anybody who's watching, I want you to give them some last words of encouragement. I know there are people who have been married for that long. Yeah. Or haven't been married for that long, but they are still feeling like, man, it's too hard for me. I can't, I can't wait. Like they are trying to give up on God. What, what, what will be your last message to anybody who is watching? Mm -hmm. Well, I will say this, and that's what I tell people: that tribulation does not a perfect fate. It gives patience to work. One thing you have to remember that all these hands are not equal. So someone may take longer day. Someone will take a shorter day. Just like a friend of mine I was talking to, he said, "Oh." We, when we started life, who, do you know how many abortions we've done? Do you know what we've done? We just got married and then God has blessed us with twins, quadruples. And then another one will say, oh, me, I've never even seen a man and I've got married and it's eight years, 10 years, nothing is coming. Just have the patience to wait. One thing you know is that, look, like I said earlier, it may delay, but you can never be denied. Mm -hmm. Actually, what you need to do is to increase your faith and just keep trusting him. One thing we have to know, we cannot understand God. We only have to trust and obey. And that is what the scriptures, just trust and obey him. Look, if scripture said it, like my wife said it, like I said, none shall be this in my house. So when you have those things in you, sometimes it's good to just go back to scripture and just say, this is what your word says. Mm -hmm. This is what scripture is saying. So why is it me? But if you have the patience to wait, you will know that not all these things are not equal. Because it may take somebody five years and God will bless them quadruple. It may take somebody. There are people who are older, 50 years, 60 years, and yet God can still bless them. Mm -hmm. Look at how we, we use Sarah's and stuff in the scripture. So look at those people. If Sarah could be over 90 and then still God can do it, then there is nothing too hard for God to do. So it may take time. It may delay, but in his time. You will make things beautiful. I don't know if my wife has something. Yeah, I also want to um, encourage someone out there. Um, it got to a point in time I wanted to change my name Hannah. Because <laughs> Hannah in the Bible... It's yeah. Hannah in her. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah in the Bible also went through the same thing. So I said, I, can I, I want to change my name. But I thank God I did not change the name Hannah. I want to encourage somebody out there. I know it's not easy if you're going through the same thing that we went through. But trust me, don't give up. That is my, my, the food that I eat right now. Giving up, uh -uh, it's not going to be, it's not even, giving up can't even get closer to me. Yes, don't give up in life. 
encourage yourself every day then believe in yourself that one day what God has said concerning your life will come to pass mm. yeah I know it's not easy but just hanging in there and very soon you're going to carry your own baby on your lap like that and then breastfeed your own baby nobody's going to do that for you you do it yourself yeah so don't give up just hanging in there